Hello, welcome to Intersect. My name is Matthew Bakovic. I'm joined by my colleague, Matt Trevers. Greetings, Matt. Thanks. So today we're gonna to talk about what penetration testers do, or pen testers. So Matt, sort of, if you had to summarize what it is a penetration tester does, okay. what would that sound like? Okay, so the uh, security professionals on the Applied Network Defense team uh, do, as you say, classic penetration testing duties. And, and that will go throughout the entire life cycle of the penetration testing, starting with open source intelligence, maybe generating phishing email, exploiting a uh, customer's environment, and then chasing the, the crown jewels. Sometimes that may be domain administrator access, or, or sometimes there are assets in the environment known as high value assets that they will uh, try to uh, obtain on behalf of the, of the customer. But sort of more, more generically, a, a penetration test mm -hmm. is emulating the tactics and techniques of an adversary in a controlled manner. Correct. And, and penetration testers are the people then who uh, execute on that plan, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah, and then uh, there's you know, a common misconception that uh, pen testing and red teaming are the same thing, and they are not. So when you talk about uh, emulating the adversary, I would make that more akin to a red team, right? So if we take the example of Swordfish versus uh, Ocean's Eleven. Swordfish, John Travolta, drives a bus through the front of a bank. It's very obvious that there's something going on, and that is kind of like a pen test, right? You're running Nmap scans, you're doing vulnerability scans, you're not trying to be stealthy. So you're doing it very deliberate, and it's very obvious to the incident responders that something is going on. Uh, red teaming, kind of like uh, Matt Damon, George Clooney, Brad Pitt sort of thing where you spend months and months planning out your attack, low and slow, trying to evade detection in order to get to the, the end goal. So the end goal of, of pen testing and red teaming is roughly the same. It's just the tactics by which you engage the, the uh, customer uh, differ slightly. Okay, so it, is it fair to say then that the the overtness of it is a differentiator between pen testing and red teaming. So Correct. as you described, low and slow. So uh, obscuring yes. uh, with, with, with greater proficiency right. is one of the key differences. But here at the SCI right. and the work that we do, we, we do both of those things, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes. Can you make me explain what that looks like? Sure, so a typical pen test will be about two weeks in length. So we will do one week external where we will use Nmap scans and, and phishing attempts to try to gain access or a foothold into the organization, which by then will pivot to try to, you know, based on rules of engagement, to find the uh, end game. Uh, with red teaming, or sorry, the second week is internal, where we are emulating somebody who has already gained access to your network, whether it be through Insider or somebody, uh, maybe supply chain, a person, maybe the HVAC. We're emulating those type of actors. So what is the profile of a pen tester? Uh, describe to Matt, if you could, the, typically the, the type of professional that comes to us to do penetration testing here at the SCI. Okay, so typically a pen tester uh, on the Applied Network Defense team has some experience using the tool set that, common, that are common to penetration testing. Uh, so those will include Nmap, SQL Map, uh, Durbusters, stuff like that. Just being able to run various tools that will allow you to achieve your objective. Metasploit is another really good example. Uh, some of the, the senior folks will come to us with certifications such as OSCP. What does that stand for, Matt? Uh, offensive, sec offensive Security Certified Professional. It is a very grueling test. Uh, those that have completed it will attest to how grueling it is. Uh, but you don't necessarily need an OSCP to apply, uh, but it does show that, you have a, that we have some assurance or some justified confidence in your ability to operate in a penetration testing role. It seems to me that, that ideally the people that, uh, that do this work need to be not only analytical, but also creative, right? So it seems to me that when you're emulating the adversary, you've got to anticipate what, what that next pivot is. So it, it, it's always occurred to me that, that pen testing is highly technical, but also one of the most kind of creative outlets we have. Right, right. So I, you know, I'm a big movie buff, so every time I make an example, I refer to a movie. So I would say that penetration testers exhibit characteristics from the matrix. So Neo learns how you know, the rules of the universe don't apply, right? So you learn how to break the rules. So just because 
you know, you're only supposed to use an eight character password or, or something else. You find a way to sidestep the, uh, the requirements because a lot of times we find that organizations may have policies or some other mandate to do something and, and people find a way around it. And if the employees find a way around it, you're, you can bet your bottom dollar that penetration testers will as well. Penetration testing is one of those things that's sort of universally useful. So it, yes. it doesn't matter if you're a federal agency, or the Department of Defense, or a critical infrastructure organization. All of these types of organizations mm -hmm. could benefit Absolutely. from a penetration test and red teaming, correct? Absolutely. Uh, it's better if a penetration tester that you paid for finds the, the uh, issues rather than somebody with uh, malicious intent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more open you are to having the penetration te testers navigate through your environment as a malicious actor would, the, the better results you will get from the penetration test. And I think something that's often lost, and something you don't see in the movies or TV, mm -hmm. is that the technical puzzle that is pen testing right. is only the first step, isn't it? Absolutely. So can you, can you talk to me about how uh, you take those findings, put them in context, and then deliver something that's actionable for an organization? Okay, great. So wh what we'll do after we've conducted the two weeks, the team will generate a report, right? And you're not generating a report for another technical person. You're generating for a C-suite or leadership and trying to show them that, hey, we were able to accomplish this goal of obtaining your assets through these various steps. And it's, it's key that you put it in business speak so they understand the impact to the business. And that is something that we, uh, that not a lot of organizations look for in pen testers, but that's something we concentrate on. When we have folks come in for a presentation, we, we are evaluating their skills as to how they would uh, be able to describe what they've done to a business professional. So is it fair to say then that penetration testing is a risk management tool? Or, or, or rather, produces output that's used in the risk management process? Absolutely. It is, is obviously hands-on keyboard, but it needs to be translated into uh, something that would go into a business impact analysis or some other form of documentation that's going to make its way up to the C-suite so the C-suite can action uh, the results of the pen test. So beyond uh, prior experience in penetration testing, mm -hmm. what are the attributes that we look for in penetration testers, meaning education or experience in, in IT? So at the SEI, we have a number of different levels, everywhere from associates all the way up to principal. And depending on what, where you are in your career, we will look for, for numbers of years of experience. For senior level folks, we like them to have master's degrees and, and 10 plus years of experience, as well as experience pre presenting to business uh, uh, minded folks. So what you're describing is we have a range of, yes. of opportunities yes. and, and as you might imagine, then the skills and, and background required for each of those varies. Yes, absolutely. Right, so the, the associates typically will will, you know, three, four years of experience, and they will most likely be operators on the penetration tests. As you go up, you know, five, ten years of experience, those are the folks that we would put in charge of a team that would be the technical liaison with, with the customer. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of a, there's a pop culture impression of what a penetration tester is, and right. it's typically an obese man in a hoodie. Right. Now, we know that hoodies and obesity aren't signs of quality in pen testing. Right. And I'm quite proud of the fact here at the SEI that we have pen testers that come in all shapes and sizes and genders. Yes. Um, and, and I think that's, that's something we should reinforce, that um, this doesn't have to be viewed and should not be viewed right. as, um, some, as a small community that doesn't allow those from the outside to understand it or become part of it. Right. Uh, we're, we believe that, that pen testing is best when it's inclusive right. and brings on people with multiple and varied skill sets. Absolutely. So we'll have pen testers that... Are, some are very skilled in web application security, some are very skilled in network security. So we have a, a diverse uh, set of experiences. Some are actually less familiar with the pen testing and more familiar with the presentation aspect of it. So it takes all kinds to make the world go around, so we kind of apply that to how we form our teams here. So what does the future look like for penetration testers and testing? So. I'm sure everybody uh, watching is, is familiar with the terms machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, in my opinion, uh, penetration testers will become more like maestros. They will be uh, managing the orchestra, right? So they'll have um, machine learning uh, driven tools that will go out and maybe scan a network. And they'll have some other ones that'll drop payloads on networks. 
and they will be less hands-on and just more thinking big picture. Uh, so maybe they're, they're getting into red teaming using their machine learning. So again, you're going low and slow, so they have to be very methodical at how they instruct the tools to, uh, to attack the customer. So is, uh, it sounds to me then that AI and ML will become sort of force multipliers, if you yes, like. So absolutely. allowing for the, the automation of the most routine and perhaps the least interesting pieces, right. and then freeing up capacity to focus on those bigger picture items, such as how does this fit into a larger risk management approach? Right. So what I'm really driving at is that ML AI will have a significant impact, yes. but we shouldn't look at it as somehow replacing penetration testers, no. but rather changing the nature of the profession. Absolutely, they will bubble up and be controlling the, the machines, right? They, they will not be replaced or removed from the situation, but they will have their roles changed to more of a managerial sort of uh, role in penetration testing. Yeah, in a similar vein, how has the rise of the cloud and the reliance on third parties changed pen testing? Wow, so that's a great question. So from what I see, a lot of companies think when you outsource something to the cloud, you're also outsourcing the risk. Which is not true. No, absolutely. You can outsource responsibility. You cannot outsource accountability. So what we also see is people uh, learning how to use these clouds and this development environment becomes production. So they may, so an Amazon S3 bucket, they may be playing with, you know, I'm going to store files in the cloud. And all of a sudden, uh, the senior leadership says, hey, that's going to save me a ton of capital expenditure. I'm not going to have to buy a lot of disks. I can move it to operational expense and store it in the cloud. And then somebody misconfigures it or there's no configuration management or change management around those buckets. And it's open to the world. Uh, that is the sort of thing that uh, we will find from time to time, more often than we'd like on assessments. Right, and we've spoken to technical penetration testing, so yes. uh, pen testing and red teaming digital things. Right. Um, another flavor of penetration testing that we don't do much of at the SCI currently is physical penetration testing. So something I also wanted to sort of discuss is um, this, other, this other realm of penetration testing where you're looking for to test uh, physical barriers. Right. Can you kind of speak to that, maybe experiences you've had? Sure. So. We actually work uh, with the Department of Homeland Security. They have their PSAs, Physical Security Advisors. We work with the CSAs or the Cybersecurity Advisors. And this is not from the Applied Network Defense. This is a different part of the CA team. Uh, but those, there's starting to merge those worlds where the PSAs and CSAs uh, will, will speak to one another. And the CSAs try to share with the PSAs hey, you know, getting access to the data center is a joint responsibility. I can, the CSAs may have the uh, access control system, but the PSAs have to make sure somebody's monitoring that uh, and there's something in place so that the door doesn't remain propped open. Uh, so yeah, we don't get into a lot of that, which I guess could also be referred to as social engineering, right? So uh, dealing with administrative assistance at, at the front door to your organization and, and being able to convince them that you are supposed to be there. Uh, so yeah, we don't get into a lot of, of that. But it's a truism in our profession that if you can get physical access to a device. Oh, it's way easier. It's way easier, right? Yeah. So the, the, point, the, the point of me asking about that is we, we need to sort of look at an all hazards approach, yes. don't we, right? So penetration testing right. has various pieces to it. Yes. Some are physical, some are digital. Right. Uh, and it's all enveloped I, I, in, in a concept of risk management. Yes, absolutely. Because it, it's not enough just to make a long list of things that are wrong. Right. right? That's only the start of the conversation. Right. Penetration testers also shape the conversation regarding prioritizing the way you fix things. Right. Can you kind of speak to that? As yeah, a so that's a, a great point. So just finding something wrong is irrelevant if it's not going to lead to compromise. So I may find a Windows 98 machine on a network, right? And it's super easy to compromise, right? It's so old, they don't do security updates for it anymore. But if that doesn't lead to anything, there's no sense worrying the customer because there's really, sure, it's a risk, having that on the network, but if it's not going to elevate somebody's privileges to domain administrator or allow them to gain access to data, it's just, it's kind of uh, irresponsible to report something like that to the customer and, and freak them out over something that's necessarily not a risk or, which, or with, is within their risk appetite. Yeah, it's something I'd like to point to is that here at the SEI, our, our mission is not to do pen testing. Right. It's do pen testing as part 
of improving the overall state of the practice, right? As a federally funded research and development center, we want to produce tools, techniques, and methods that are useful right. to the Department of Defense right. and our other stakeholders. Right. So one of the things that I'd say to the audience is, if you're interested in penetration testing, but moreover you're interested in this national defense mission and improving the state of the art and state of the practice, I think we might be a good fit for you. Yeah, absolutely. So Matt, for folks that are watching uh, that are interested in pen testing, maybe aren't pen testers, what's, what's something they could do as a first step in, in understanding the profession or becoming part of it? Uh, practice, practice, practice. But right? practice what? Uh, so you can go out and there are many free resources on the internet, so such as uh, Volnhub is a, is a website I'm familiar with where you can go download uh, intentionally malicious uh, virtual machines and you can practice your craft. Again, you can use YouTube, other different sources of, of information for free to learn how to use the tools and craft together a uh, life cycle for the penetration tester. I think it's also important to give this, this caveat, which is you need to do these things in a controlled manner. Yes, so the, yes. the thing that would disqualify you from becoming yes. a penetration tester yes. most places, yes. and certainly here at the SEI, yeah is sort of engaging in right. hacking or penetration right. testing right. Uh, in a way that isn't controlled or acknowledged right. or con there's no consent from the party that you're testing. Right, so the really good uh, penetration testers that will create YouTube videos or if they decide to take the OSCP or other certifications, the first thing they tell you is if you don't have permission, you're breaking the law, right? So don't go out and, and scan your neighbor's wireless or, or scan your school's website or, or your, your neighborhood or your community if you don't have permission. That is one of the reasons why rules of engagements and just how to conduct yourself as a security professional is imperative to becoming a pen, pen tester. So I, I think thinking about the, the conversation we're having, uh, the need will change but not go away for penetration testers. Correct. Certainly the world is awash in new devices and new yes. types of technology. Yes. So as that changes, then the profession of penetration changes. Yes. Uh, here at the SCI, we're very interested in doing cutting edge research yes. and penetration testing and red teaming. Right. So that includes networks, platforms, right. devices. Right. Um, so it's really, uh, it's a wide open field, isn't it? Yes, and just to, to elaborate a little bit on that further, so the folks on the uh, team, the threat landscape is constantly changing. New, as you mentioned, new software packages are updated, new vulnerabilities are found. So the team will actually spend some of their time developing new tools to put into their toolkit that they use on assessments. And that, you can see the excitement in their eyes when, when they've found a new way to exploit uh, a vulnerability or perhaps give more uh, value add to the customer. So Matt, I neglected to sort of mention your role here at the SCI. So you're a technical manager. Uh, you lead the cybersecurity assurance team within right. the CERT division. Yes. And I know that you're always looking for good people. Yes. And, and one of the types of good people you're looking for currently are penetration testers. Yes. So I'd encourage anyone that's watching that's interested to, uh, to look to our website. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you'll find a number of open positions. Yes. There's lots of good roles at the SEI, not just penetration testers. But if you are a penetration tester or you're aspiring to a penetration tester, I think we're a good place to be. Yes. So Matt, kind of capping thoughts about uh, working in the SCI as a penetration tester? Yes. So. Uh, it's a really great opportunity. We have great work-life balance. Uh, we contribute to your uh, retirement. We do professional development. Uh, you get to work with a lot of really great folks, and you'll also get to, to see the country, right? So we evaluate organizations across the country with, with our industry partners and our department and agency sponsors. Uh, it's just it's a really good mix of, of of, of where to uh, take your career. And it's a, it's a really important mission. I, I would say this, that yes. so uh, we do these things because we want a more resilient yes. nation and we want to ensure that we maintain uh, superiority over our adversaries. So uh, I think one of the things that differentiates us from others is that national security mission. Yes, yeah, FFRDC, that's, that's in the name, right? Federally funded. So. Well, Matt, thank you so much for insights regarding penetration testing and penetration testers. And uh, if you're watching, please do consult our website if you have an interest in perhaps joining our organization. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.